Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here and welcome back to the introduction to Python the Read course. Today we are on module six, which will be covering modules. And you're like, well, if this is module six, what are you talking about modules? And uh, I'm actually talk about that. So let's get into the code. So on my screen, um, let's open up a new file, right? So save this. And let's head over to our introduction to Python 3 folder. Here we can make a new folder for specific to module six. Oops, I didn't realize my caps lock was on. Module six. And uh, let's open module six. And we'll call this um, modules.py. All right. So I'm gonna open up a shell and um, let's talk about, you know, how or like what a module is, because I'm sure you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. So something you need to understand about Python is that it's a very dynamic language, right? Um, in other languages, or actually let's make a variable. We'll call this name and we'll have it be equal to Bob. So this name variable, if we try to see what type of variable this is or what type of data type the variable is holding, it's going to say it's a string, right? Um, and then the same thing if we try to find uh, something for like true, it's going to let us know it's a Boolean. And if we try to find the type um, of something like 4.7, whoops. Um, Type 4.7. There you go. And we'll say it's a float. And if you know you do type for like the number five, it says it's an integer. Python is able to dynamically determine this. You don't have to um, declare the data type before you um, make a variable. If you've coded in a programming language like Java before, um, if we wanted to make the same variable, we would have to declare this name variable as a string and then assign it the value of Bob or the string. Um, in Python, it can just determine that this is a string because there's double quotes here. And it would be able to determine this is a integer because it's just a number or a float because of this decimal point or this Boolean value because it's true. Sorry. Um, so Python is because of this, Python's very modular. In other languages, same as Java, are, you can import modules into. And a module is just basically a piece of code that can give our, um, or it's an object that can give our code more functionality, right? Now there's things like, um, what other modules are there? There's a date time module that allows you to get the current date and time of, you know, get the current date and time. You don't have to like, ask the user for the date and time. You don't have to make a variable called the date for the date and time. There's a module that you can import that allows you to access the date and time. There's an a module for math. So you can do complex math equations. There's a module for, um, um, there's a module called Pi out of GUI, which allows you to control the keyboard, which is pretty cool. There's a module called random, which will allow you to um, generate random values. And that's the one we're going to be using today. All right. So in order to import a module, um, first let's you know define what a module is. It's a module is an object um, or external code that al allows, all right, that gives our code more functionality. Um, now Python, is pretty cool because it not only comes with modules pre-installed, but you can actually install modules off the internet. We're gonna get into that later, right? Oh, by the way, these modules were probably made by like other community members or Python developers or people from the Python company um, and all this other stuff. So we're getting to that later, but it's, it's a pretty cool thing. So how do we import these modules, right? Because they aren't there by default, we need to import these modules, right? So the import command 
will import a module. And we can do import. So the module we're going to be using is random, but you can import random, right? So import, and it would import this module. Now, if we wanted to, um, random would be the name of the module, by the way. So if you want to import um, a different module, like daytime, you would import daytime. But we want to be using random because that's the one we're going to be covering in this course. Um, now there's the as operator, which will um, um, assign a module to a variable name. So let's say if you don't want to use um, the random object, you can as the name to um, give your code more functionality, you can give it a variable name using as. So we're going to give it the variable name R. And um, so there's also a from statement. In this from statement, we can import specific methods from a module. So you could do from random, whoops, from random import, I don't know, choice, because that's a method for the random module, all right? And we can even, um, we can use variables, or we can use the as operator with from. So we can do from random import choice as C. So now we have this full, you know, command where we can take the random module and import the choice method and assign it the variable name C. All right. Um, so let's head over to our module and I want you guys to type import this. Now, when you import this, it will give you the Zen of Python uh, by Tim Peters. And it basically is a set of rules on how to write Python code efficiently. All right, so now we can actually get into how we can use these modules, right? So let's save this and then Control Shift S to get these, the new file. And we'll call this file random.py, all right? Save it and uh, we delete all this. So the random module, um, it is used to generate random values. So um, let's import, import random module. And like I showed you, we can just import it, um, import random, and we're gonna do as R just so that way um, I don't have to write the whole word of random out loud or out through this, um, out through the code. So the first method we're gonna cover is the random method. And this will return a value between zero and 9.999, I'm going on forever, wait. Let's actually do this. We can print um, r.random. And if we run this, we get 0 0.69 whatever. And uh, we can run this again. And I'm gonna move this window to the left just so you guys can see this better. So, and again, it just generates a random value each time we run it. The next method we'll cover is the uniform method. Uniform method. And this will return a value. Oh, I just realized I spelled this wrong. My bad, guys. But we'll return a value. 
I probably spelled like a bunch of stuff wrong throughout this course, but uh, it's all right. So this will return the value um, between two points as a float. All right, two arguments that um, go into the uniform method. Um, so values put as the first argument will, um, they are inclusive, all right? Uh, they are inclusive. This means that they are included as possible output. Um, values put as the second argument are non-inclusive. This means that they are not included as possible output. So you may be kind of wondering, all right, what does that mean exactly? So let me show you. So if we print r dot uniform, and then we get the first value one and the second value 10, when we run this, the number 10 will not be considered as a possible value. So we can, you know, uh, run this and not one of these values will be 10. There will be nine because this 10 is not included as value as an output. It will be one through nine basically. seems like most of them are like, yeah, so one is included, right? So the one is included as a art, um, as a possible output, right? Because it's the first argument. 10, you can do this as many times as you want. And uh, 10, there won't be a 10 point anything. All right. So that's just for you guys to know. Uh, the next method we're going to be talking about is the rand int method. Uh, and you can kind of guess what it already is doing by the name, but if you don't, it returns, or it will return a value between two points as integers. And it is inclusive. So unlike the uh, uh, uniform method, it can uh, end up printing out your both values or both arguments you place. So if we print r.rand int and we do uh, one through 10, we can print this out. And um, so let's actually do some print statements, backslash n, Actually, we just do random. And then here we can print uh, backslash n and then uniform. And then here we can print our um, randint backslash n randint. And then when we run this, oh, whoops, there you go. So the random looks like this, this is uniform and the random is four. If we run this again, the random is eight. If we run this again, the random is 10. So you can see 10 is inclusive, right? So it included the 10 as output but the 10 will not be included as output for um, the uniform. So we can 
move on to the next one. This is the choice method. I mentioned this one earlier, I believe. Um, this will return a value from a group. So let's do uh, dice is equal to um, a list from the range of one through seven. So one through six, right? And it will uh, print r.choice and then we'll put in our dice variable and um, I'll just do print uh, x less n choice. There you go. So if we run this, it chose one. And if you run this again, it shows six. If you run this again, it chose one. Run this again, it chose two. So it chose a random value from this list of one through six. So now you just made a dice simulator, right? Um, you know, there's six sides on the die, you roll it and you get a number from one to six. Now, if you were making a game, this is all you would need to simulate a die. And in our dog name generator, we could have used this method, uh, this module as a way to um, choose a dog name, right? We can just give them a random dog name rather than asking them for a number and that number is going to be used as an index, right? It would be a lot more simple and this is what our um, these modules allow us to do. Um, so now there's the choices method, the choices method. And this will return a value or returns multiple values. So this will return multiple values from a group. All right, and something to keep noted in this is K, the K variable. And the K variable is equal to the number of values we wish to return. Um, and it does have to be a K. All right, so for the um, choices method, we can print um, r.choices and then we'll use our um, iterable for the dice or our data structure. And then for our variable, we'll do K is equal to, let's say three. So if we run this, it shows two, six, and three as our random uh, values, right? So when you print uh, choices, there you go. So we can print choices and we got two, um, three random, very three random uh, values from the list. So we can run this again. We got one, six, and one. We do this again. We got two, three, uh, two, three, one. So if you're making a game and the person has to roll a dice three times, this would be a perfect example of uh, how you could use a program like this, right? So the next method we will cover is the uh, shuffle method. And the shuffle method will basically return uh, shuffled values. So we can do a uh, print and uh, backslash n shuffle. And um, we can do an r dot shuffle. Oh, you know what's a perfect example for shuffling? A deck of cards, right? So let's do a deck. We do a card deck equals to do a set of um, the range 
of one, two, 53, because there are 52 cards in the deck. And the R dot shuffle will, um, we can shuffle our card deck. So if you're making a card game, this would be perfect, right? And then you could print the um, card deck. So let's print the card deck before shuffle and print the card deck after shuffle, right? So we print the card deck. And then, right here. cool. Oh yes, sets aren't scriptable, right? So we would have to do uh, a list. And if we, there you go. So this is our normal card deck from one to 52. Um, then we can shuffle the cards and now we have all these like completely rearranged and reorganized and stuff, things like that. Of course, this isn't the perfect example, but you can kind of see how if you're making a card game, you could do something like this, right? The last uh, method I'm actually going to cover is the uh, sample method. And the sample method will basically um, return random values, but none of them are repeated. So let's go ahead and uh, print uh, r.sample. Oh, wait. We need to uh, make our print statement saying that this is the sampling method. And then we can r.sample and we can use our card deck. And it will use k equal to, I don't know, let's say five. We'll get five random cards, none of which are repeated. So when we run this, it gets five random cards. Now remember with the dice, oh, I didn't realize I deleted that. Um, I'm sorry, when we cover choices, uh, the choices method and um, the choices method uh, returns multiple uh, values from a, a group. And um, we use the K variable, which um, represents the number of values. Uh, variable equals number of values to return. And then we made, um, we just print our uh, backslash n choices. And um, we can print our r dot choices from dice. So we run this. We have our r dot choices one. Oh, I forgot to specify. Uh, let's do k equals three. So with the choices, right, we get four, five, five, because it gets four um, random values from the list of the die list, right? But with sample, there's no repeated value. So you see with choices, it got four, I mean, it got three random values that exist within that list. With sample, we got five different uh, values, but none of them are the same value, all right? So you can save this and you have now like a little reference for the random module. So let's hit Control Shift S and let's make 
Um, actually, I think that's it. I'm gonna just talk to you guys real quick about the um, Python package index. So basically the Python package index is an area where we can install more modules other than the modules that come pre-installed with Python. And um, here it is. So this is the py.pi.org. The link is in the description and in the course overview. And basically you can search up modules for um, different projects you may need to make. So let's say do uh, games, I don't know. Um, so you can see different, you know, modules for different games. If you're looking for one specific, um, I know Pygame, I don't know if Pygame is a uh, external module or not, but Pygame is basically a Python module that allows you to make games. Um, and there's different uh, things like uh, Kinter, or it's spelled tkinter. Um, yeah, this is, so tkinter comes with Python, but you can use it to um, make graphic user interfaces. Um, you know, something that looks like this, right? There you go, Flask. So you can use Fla um, Flask to make websites and you would just um, be able to do cool things like that. You can make a website that looks kind of like this with Python, right? And that's part of the modularity of Python. Um, but, um, I wouldn't jump into this yet until at least not until you finish this course, because these are co more complicated topics and we are only on module, you know, six and we still have another six modules to go. Right. So these are really cool. So feel free to explore these once you finish the course and check them out and make some cool projects. I personally have made some cool projects using um, other modules and they are on my channel. So you can look through my channel and see some of those, but in order to even get these projects, right? Cause you can't just import Flask cause it, it doesn't come with the installation of Python. So it's not gonna know what you're talking about. So that's why we have pip. So you'll see this little pip command here and pip basically allows us to install some mod modules. Now you, if you installed Python on your computer, um, you should have pip. So if I do pip tatac version, Python 3.9, yes, we have pip. If that didn't work, if you opened up your PowerShell, you can hit the Windows key and type in PowerShell to open up your PowerShell. Um, if that didn't work, then you didn't install Python properly. But if um, you want to get pip, um, I'll have a link in the course overview of how to um, get pip on your computer if you didn't install Python properly or whatever. Um, in order to install a module using pip, you would just do pip install and then the name of the module, right? Um, and then you would just enter that, but we're not gonna worry about that. That's more um, topics that extend outside the range of this course. Um, so, that's going to be it though. So we made a cool little thing here. So let's actually use the um, uh, random module to make a program. And I think a cool little program we can make is a password, ma uh, password generator, right? So let's hit control shift S and uh, we're going to actually, you know, start the practice. So if you guys want to try to make your own um, password generator, now is the time you can leave. If you want some other ideas, um, you can make, you know, rock, paper, scissors. You can make like a dice simulator like we, we showed you earlier. You can make a coin flipper. You can make a decision maker. Like if you can't make a decision, um, it will give you suggestions on how you can um, go through and making that decision. Um, you can make a random joke teller, you know, just use the random module to do anything that you would do randomly. But now we're gonna start the practice. so. Let's go ahead and start that. So we're going to do password um, tech generator dot py. And we're going to clear all that and let's get started. So um, this is going to be our password generator generator 
and it's going to be you know, created by me, Cosmo. And of course, you can put your name there. So let's import the Python module. So import random module. And we're going to be using R to represent the random module. So import random as R. We can say banner and then uh, ha have it print out our title, which is going to be password generator slash n like that. And um, we're going to have an empty password variable. Okay, and this empty password variable is what we're going to add all of the random text to. So we're going to say password is equal to an empty string. Now, let's say variables for password uh, generation. All right. So the first variable we're going to have is lowercase, and it's going to be equal to the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, uh, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. All right, so, All right, I was just making sure that was correct. So now we can have a variable called uppercase, and these, will be the same thing as the, um, what's it called, as the variable above, and uh, w, x, y, z. There, so it's the same thing as above, but these are uppercase, right? Then we'll have numbers, oops, numbers, and this will be equal to a string of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And um, we can have symbols, right? Because this is going to be part of our password generator. So we have symbols. And I'm just going to hold down the shift key, hit the top of my keyboard, and then unhold the shift key. Whoops. Uh, what's the last one? Plus equals. All right, so plus, and then we'll have the back tick, we'll have the minus, the equals, then these three, these three, these two, these two, hold shift here. And um, of course, we won't have to do a backslash on this uh, double quote right here. And uh, I think those are all the symbols we really need. I just hit the random symbols on my keyboard. And then we'll have all care actors. And all characters is equal to lowercase plus uppercase plus number plus symbols. So we just concat concatenated all of the um, variables together. So now we can get the user input and this user input will be asking for um, the password length. We can say password length will be equal to the integer version of their input and in this input we're going to um, ask them to enter the number of characters for your password. And uh, we can go down here and we can actually generate the password. So we can do for i in the range of password 
length, we can uh, we can get a random character, right? So get random character, and then so the character will equal r dot choice. And then from the all characters variable that we made. And then it will add the random character to our password. And um, we could do password plus equals character. All right, now we can just output the password. And then we can just do print password. Password. All right, there you go. So we can save this and we can run it. So password generator, enter the number of characters for your password. We'll do 16 and there you go it generated the password. So instead of printing the password straight up, let's make it look a little bit neater. So we can say your password is, and then we can put in the password. And then we can, we're not gonna put it in between quotes because um, quotes are included as a password option. So we're just going to say your password is this, and then we can run it. So then enter the number of characters for your password. We're going to do 24, and it says your password is this. And we can do uh, run it again. Oh, did I? Uh, oh, no, I did, just, just in case. Um, enter the number of characters for your password. We can do like three. And it creates a password of three characters. Right. So I'm gonna just put a colon here, a space, just so you can identify that, and we're done. So we just made a random password generator. Right? It generates a completely random password. Um, that that's it, actually. So <laughs> it's a pretty simple project, and now you can show it to your friends, show it to your family, saying you. You know, you're learning Python and now you're able to do some cool projects like this. So uh, I guess I will see you guys in the next module. And I believe in this next module, we're going to be learning. Uh, what are we going to be doing in this next, next module is uh, methods and functions. That's right. So we're going to be doing learning about more methods and functions. So we can check out what cool projects we made in module six, so we made these three modules. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you guys, uh, those probably the least amount of um, modules or programs we made, but this is probably one of the cooler programs we made in this course so far. So um, regardless, I will see you guys in the next module. If you guys are taking this on the website, then make sure to you know take the quiz, test yourself to see how much um, your learning or how much knowledge you are, you know, how much knowledge you're retaining. If you are taking this on YouTube, then I'll see you guys in the next video as well. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe and do the whole YouTube algorithm thing. And I will see you guys in the next one. So stay happy, stay positive, And as always, happy hacking.